of day through the iron bars of a prison in a small town some 50 miles from Paris. When the prison matron, who was also the prison midwife, filled in my birth certificate, she caused what may be regarded as the one blot on my family escutcheon, and as a result, I never knew my father's name. In my zeal to correct this omission, I was to borrow many names for many occasions until I hit upon the one that France will long remember. Eugène François Vidoc. Like most great men, I came of a poor but honest family, a little poorer than honest. The difference accounted for my being born in prison. Whenever poor Mama expected another baby and consequently needed shelter, it was her custom to steal a loaf of bread and go to prison. She had stolen 11 loaves, served 11 sentences, and had 11 children. When to her misfortunes were added a 12th loaf, a 12th sentence, and my humble self. When poor Mama went to a better world, leaving me to make the best of this one, what is more natural than that I should often return to the happy scene of my earliest childhood? And so, after many years, again I find myself among those dear familiar sights and smells, spending another birthday at home. My monastic seclusion was devoted to a study of the classics, particularly one from which I acquired my style, not only in literature, but in my brilliant career of love and crime. My modest apartment was shared by a sympathetic companion into whose company the authorities had happily thrown me. He was a cut purse whose knife could rip a pocket most profitably, till one day his knife had gone a little deeper and Emile was sent to jail a little longer than usual. He may have had his faults, but his care for my wardrobe and for me was truly touching. He never woke me before ten. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Jailer's daughter. No. Oh, tell her I'm not at home. All right. My father doesn't... Shh, shh, shh. Peggy's still asleep. My father doesn't know I'm here. But a sweet old lady came all the way from Paris to bring this birthday cake. Oh, yeah. And I thought I... That's from my Aunt Ernestine. Thank you. Thank you. Jeanette. Present from my Aunt Ernestine to you. Such a good woman. She, she knows how bad the food is in jail. She ought to. She spent the best years of her life in them. 
Oh, no, no, no. She didn't. You're mixing my Aunt Ernestine with my Uncle Hugo. He got 15 years. Oh, yes, for lifting watches. Oh, you get everything wrong. As my cousin Pierre, he's the pickpocket of our family. How often have I told you? Now, look, my Uncle Hugo, he's... But he's the burglar. Right. Right. And what a burglar. His case was in all the papers. Oh, sure. He robbed the palace of the Duc d'Orléans. And let's get on with Aunt Ernestine's cake. Oh, yes, the cake. I'm sure she lifted it from the best pastry shop in Paris. Oh, Aunt Ernestine only deals with the best shops. And you know, Uncle Hugo says it's always cheaper to steal in the most expensive places. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. It's your birthday. Make a wish. May. Mm. What's that? My wish. A file. How very thoughtful of Aunt Ernestine. And it works, too. Mm -hmm. You must remember to thank her when we get to Paris. <laughs> There, see? The town of Neuilly and St. George's Church. <laughs> Only a few more hours to Paris. Emile was that grimmest of characters, an early morning optimist. All through the rainy night, he had added to my misery with his unfailing cheerfulness and family stories while we'd been running, dodging, jumping fences, soaked to the skins we were trying to save. At last, it was the porch of the kindly church of St. George that offered a shelter from the rain and from the police. You've got two legs and I've got two legs, but together they don't add up to the four legs of a horse. A horse? No, they don't. <sighs> At last the rain had stopped. Timidly the sun came out and the little town awakened to its sleepy day. On the church steps the pigeons were cooing and fluttering about, but we snored on till our dreams were disturbed by the sound of voices. Father, did you ever see such a contrast between two faces? Such innocence on one, such evil on the other. Uh, uh, Messiah, would you object to making a little money? Money? If I could only catch that soulless animal look, what a dragon. And there, the very image of a saint. Your face, my dear monsieur, expresses the essence of that purity for which St. George lived, fought, and conquered. But the wind and weather of 400 years of obliterated could only have been restored by the faith to will it, the art to execute it, and Providence's gift of models to pose for. And please don't move, Monsieur Dragon. Ease your paw a little lower. And if you could just recapture that uh, avid expression, the one you had when I offered you the money. Oh, yes. How about the money? That's good, that's good. Now, look up. Thank you. What a wonderfully horrible thing. Master, I congratulate you. St. George is divine. The dragon will excite horror in every pious heart. But your horse, what a horse even better than your saint. A horse to the life. A horse that could take you to Villeneuve, to Lyon, to Marseille. It could even be sold. What are you waiting for? Please don't move, monsieur. But monsieur! But monsieur! My horse! Monsieur! I'm not finished! My horse! Meet my family. This is 
my Aunt Elmy. Enchanted, mademoiselle. Uh, your cake, and especially its filling, were a revelation. Revelation, Auntie. And this must be Uncle Hugo, the head of the family. Sorry that you find me in my foot bar, but I caught rheumatism from being out late at night. Oh, may I suggest that you add a spoonful of mustard to the water? Huh? Uh, mustard. My mother used to suffer from the same occupational disease, and mustard never failed her. Mustard. Uncle is stubborn. Uncle won't wear a shawl when he goes stealing. Pass. What language. Our little Louis. Only 12 years old, but uh, such busy fingers. And this is cousin Pierre. Honored. And this is Gabriel, the artist of our family. Honored. Monsieur. Charmed. Only this morning we had a most gratifying encounter with an artist. My dear monsieur, my dear nephew, I, uh, I, the family council, have debated your difficult and delicate situation and what should be done about it. I, uh, that is, the family, have decided you must leave Paris this very night. Leave home? Tonight? Your family is convinced that for both of you the safest place is in the arms. Army? Safe? You will join General Bonaparte's glorious troops at Marseille, where they are assembling now for the campaign in, um, uh, where is it? Egypt. Oh, yes, Egypt. Just think, Emil. You will be able to fulfill the dream of my life to see the pyramids. The pyramids? How wonderful, Emil. Hand me the documents. All night long, our dear Gabriel has bent over his printing press in the cellar to make these. For you, monsieur, and for you, my dear nephew. But, uncle, suppose we are shot before we get to the pyramid. Don't be morbid, Emile. Rank of first lieutenant of the artillery is hereby bestowed upon the honorable Eugene Francois Rousseau. Rousseau? Your new name. Oh, see. Signed Napoleon Bonaparte in the general's own unmistakable handwriting. Monsieur Gabriel, a masterpiece. Nothing, nothing. At least compared to my last issue of the Bank of France. Monsieur, I bow to your art. At Marseille, our stolen uniforms and counterfeit passports have been accepted without question. But a soldier's uniform is hardly complete without a lovely lady leaning on his sleeve. Emile and I still needed that one sentimental accessory and were looking for it. Gentlemen, gentlemen, come inside and see Loretta, the beautiful shadow on a Mediterranean screen. Enticing, alluring, elusive, provocative, and two francs only. Two francs for Loretta? We got that much? Two francs? Ah, come in, gentlemen. Come in. I've got a flame that's too hot to handle. There's no one who can hold a candle to the dame who's the flame and the scandal of Paris. Some girls go for flowers and romance. I'm not taking a chance. My flame is for a general. Tonight, I'll light them with my flame. No need for 
swallow my flame, Lieutenant? There's never been anyone who's met her Who could kiss her and then forget her There's no cure for a more much better than Loretta Some else go for flowers and romance I'm not taking a chance My fame is for a general I like your curly hair, monsieur. You have that certain flair, monsieur. We'd make a lovely pair, monsieur, but my flame is for us. General. Have you changed your mind? Mademoiselle, I just came to tell you that your beauty is overshadowed only by your talent. You should be in the Paris Opera in the Imperial Theatre of Vienna. I should be in Tortoni's restaurant right now. I'm late for a supper engagement. Mademoiselle, you are a charming realist. And you? You're an idealist, of course. Of course. <laughs> you don't look like one. Well, what does an idealist look like? Oh, very noble, innocent. Very, very shy. Enough, mademoiselle. I confess that I'm not one. No, no more. I, I told you I'm expected at Tortoni's. By a captain or a colonel? Higher than that. The chief of police. Richet? Who's he trying to catch here? A shadow. Would you pass me my garden? Oh, I see. So that's the way the chief of police tries to catch a shadow. May I, mademoiselle? Mm. It appears that uh, your knight of the garter has excellent taste. Beautiful rubies, aren't they? I was referring to mademoiselle's beautiful leg. Oh. May I escort you? Oh, no, no, I... Just to the door of Tortoni's. Then I promise to vanish. You promise? Promise. Emile, a cab. Oh, my God! What? What about my, uh, your guard? Oh, he stole it. I mean, who uh, stole it? The gentleman who brought me here in a cab. What's this? You were with a gentleman alone in a cab? Is it possible that a gentleman could steal a respectable woman's garter without? Uh, yes. Uh, no. I mean, he, he must have taken it off while he was putting it on. What? How can you take it off when you? Put, you mean to say he put it on? Oh, I don't know. On, off. It's gone. <laughs> uh, please, please. Mademoiselle, you must not look upon me as the uh, grateful friend who gave you the garter, but as the detective who will help you recover it. But first, the facts. Please be precise. What facts haven't I given you? Uh, for instance, uh, his name. His name? Oh, uh, it might be Russo or, or Crusoe. Or, or it could be Crusoe. Oh, uh, well, the criminals change the name oftener than their shirts. But the appearance is important. 
Could it be that he's the same person about whom we've had similar complaints during the past week? Uh, young, dashing, uh, Casanova-like type? I d no, no. He was old, bald, not attractive at all. Uh, pray be seated. Mademoiselle, don't despair. I have never yet failed to find what I've uh, been looking for. Then I may leave everything in your hands. Uh, precisely. After we had left the army, we decided we might risk a return to Paris. Paris, capital of the world, and the El Dorado of every knight of fortune. Look there, again. The Church of St. George, only a few hours to Paris. My dear dragon, this time we better make a detour. Oh. You tankish fool, you'll never catch him that way. Drive him over Baron Nobert's grave. Oh. oh, don't go around and jump it. Oh, Lord, what a monstrous coward, afraid of a monkey. I hope he bites you. Look at that old Christmas tree parading around with diamonds big as tombstones. We could only get our hands on it. It isn't done, Emil, to put such thoughts into words. Rather, let us pay our respects to those who rest in peace. Oh, a fig for your fears. Oh! <laughs> Praise heaven, Satan has bitten you. What is the trouble, madame? Oh, uh, Satan is there. Satan. Between the bishop's tombstone and the grave of Madame de... de, de oh, I've forgotten what that... that grain dealer's daughter. Well, Satan, I, I... I trust he's not after the bishop's soul. I trust you'll catch my little imp. If your legs are as quick as your wit, monsieur. Uh, madame, uh, your lackey has legs. The gentleman can only offer his wit. What she? Now, what a gallant charmer. My rogue of a monkey is downright mesmerized. How his eyes follow the sparkle. <laughs> Got you, Satan. Bravissimo, bravissimo. Come, my little one. He ran away while I was putting lilacs on the Count's grave. You see, I became sentimental, and my little devil is frightened of tears. My fortune is tired, Monsieur, that you happen by uh, to look in on some departed friend or relative, perhaps? Uh, well, uh... No, 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 don't tell me. I'll guess. You see, all of them here were my friends, or pretended to be. Uh, Monsieur de Clermont had just such a forehead. But no, he had nothing behind it. Could he be the Count? Not, um, not quite a Count, but just a Baron. Baron? Ah! Oh, Baron François Vidoc, blood, to be sure. Your lips, your chin, the same malicious dark in the eye, even the same naughty... But, but it's not good to speak of the dead in their presence. It would be safer to nibble at his reputation over a cup of chocolate. Charmed. Good. I'll expect you this afternoon. Any child can direct you to the chateau of the Marquise de Piedmont. Enchanted, Madame la Marquise. Emile, you're going to let that hat go off wearing half a jewelry shop? Wait till this afternoon. What? We'll get the whole shop. <laughs> That's worth waiting for. <laughs> but, uh, let's not wait here. Why not? What could be more restful? Find yourself a grave, Emil. And a name, too, while you're at it.
I was half down the steps before I realized you were along. <laughs> I might have known you were looking at that picture again. I'm in love with it. He is handsome. Much handsomer than the other thing. I admit that much. Mimi. Huh? Well, don't look at a thing because he's handsome, but, but because he's a saint. Then why don't you look at other things? Here's St. Joseph, for instance. I'll tell you why not. Because he's a carpenter instead of a knight, and he's not handsome. Oh, Mimi. What have I done to deserve such a horrible little sister? <laughs> now let's go home. Home? Yes. Oh, whenever you look at that picture, you forget everything. Have you forgotten our beautiful secret little plans to go... Good morning, Father. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mimi. Good morning, Ferrer. <laughs> Come on. What your sister said. What now? Are you really in love? Oh. Come on, tell us who he is. Yes, who is it? Mimi, you're a chatterbox. I didn't tell with whom. I wouldn't have told anything. But it just says you think too much of yourself to fall in love. Ever. Then it is true. Perhaps. Who is the man? There is no man. Oh, how can you be in love with nobody? Why not? Love existed long before we did. Oh, you're just trying to be mysterious. I still say she thinks no man on earth is good enough for her. That's why you're always running off to church. You want to become a bride of heaven. Yes. Sometimes I think I'd like to be a nun. A nun? Oh, I wouldn't want to hide my shoulders under a cowl. I must go home now. Mm. I want to go <laughs> Therese, Elaine, will you help me place my bodice? Come out, it's time to dress. Therese, Mimi, aren't you ever coming? But when he raised his arm to strike, it was the same gesture, same face. You're beginning to see him everywhere. One thing more. Monsieur Vidoc will stay overnight. Have his bags brought in and his men unpack them. That'll be all. Very well, madame. Heavens! We're late for the chocolate. Grandmama will be furious. Come on, Grandmama. With the guest, mademoiselle. A guest? I wonder who it is. Mimi! Mimi! Therese, what is it? He's in there with Grandmama. Who? St. George. St. George. Oh! I'm beginning to see him, too. Therese! Peeping through keyholes? At your age? <gasps> oh! I'm so happy to see you. So happy. <laughs> it's only a week that you haven't seen me, and yet I'd no idea Papa's little girl loved Papa so much. <laughs> uh, better change now, children. Uh, change for dinner. Papa's hungry. Is your grandmother in there? Grandmother's introducing them. This is Monsieur Rudon, husband of my late daughter, otherwise distinguished by being Minister of Police. Oh, Police? Oh, enchanted, Monsieur. Madame la Marquise, I regret I must wrench myself from your presence and retire to my room. Oh, pray do. Quick, hide. Quick. <laughs> 
Forgive me for intruding upon your reverie. Now, there you are. Show me to my room, please. <laughs> when they told me to unpack, I knew you'd wangle a stay over. Instead of having to break in, we are in. Yes, we're in, in the house of the Minister of Police. Minister of what? Police. Will you let me off my boots? Boots. Find them at dinner. Get the lay out of the house. I don't care how you get it, but get it. Well, how? From a chambermaid. Oh. Find out where the old woman sleeps and where she keeps her jewelry. Oh. Yes. In case we have to pry open the lock, see that your knife has a sharp point. Mm -hmm. And a sharp blade. In case the old woman doesn't sleep well. My dear Emile, I hope you're not suggesting violence. Why not? Are you beginning to go moral? It isn't a question of morals, but of manners. A man who's capable of killing with a knife is quite liable to eat with one. Madame la Marquise, for your health and a very long life. Lads, the girls are late again. Madam, the young ladies ask to be excused. They have a headache, both of them. Both of them? Your Excellency. Huh? Huh? Oh, no, no. Join me. It's a cliche, my chief of police. Your Excellency, a matter of the utmost importance has arisen with us. Madame. A thousand apologies for intruding on your dinner, but I have real. Not at all. Won't you join us? Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. Well, very kind indeed. The Villeneuve stagecoach was robbed last night. What? The, and the thief? Have you caught him? Well, not yet, Your Excellency, but he's within my grasp. Uh, your Excellency, if you don't mind, I... Uh... Oh, don't go, Monsieur. Nothing you can't hear. Your Excellency, Villeneuve is the final proof of my theory. Again, the criminal is described as young, dashing Casanova-like. But in all the other cases, there was a woman. Your Excellency, in the coach there were six. I shall prove my theory. Here we are, near Paris. And this is Marseille. Thank you. Marseille, where the criminal, disguised as a young lieutenant of artillery, committed a crime that was uh, mm, uh, rather delicate and uh, somewhat uh, personal, madame. And next, Nice, where he had the audacity to impersonate Lord Byron. A monstrous rogue, this criminal. I'd like to meet him. And now, the trail of his subsequent moves. First, Abbeville last month, Bone last week, Villeneuve last night, and next... Paris. Precisely. Richard. You'd better put guard around the bank of Paris. And you'd better put a guard around the banker's wife. He is a widower. Unfortunately. I've planted my men on all roads to Paris. The criminal will be walking into my web. Now, I hope he walks into my parlor before he walks into your web. At the moment, madame, you can hardly walk into one without walking into the other. And I assure you, madame, that's the very last thing he'd do. I disagree with you, monsieur. In crime, as in love, there are only those who do and those who don't dare. Well, I don't suppose there's much doing around here after dark. That is, uh, for a neat little trick like you. <laughs> Not where the old Marquis wants, as he lies out by ten. Ten? Mm -hmm. Do we have to shut up by ten, too? Oh, no. Hmm? Marquis is over on that side. That side? Uh huh. And the guest room is yes, on. Yes, I know, I know, guest room on that side. Uh -huh. Well, my knife is getting a little dull. Got that? Got a sharpener? Sharpener? There. <laughs> <laughs> Open the window a bit. 
Fresh air is bad for the health, but tightly hot tonight. Ah, how there must she be, Doc, reminds me of his great uncle. A pox on you, Satan. I will not have your devilish fingers mixing my jewels. Here's the key. Put them away. It's already past ten, past our bedtime. It's only heat lightning. My little one, don't be frightened. It's no storm, I want <laughs> You're keen, man. Snuff the candle. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, and if there's another storm tonight, it'll certainly storm in the morning if Grandma will find we haven't been in bed. Please, you insisted on coming. Have you forgotten how important it is? We must make sure. Oh, Therese. Suppose, suppose someone sees us. Oh, Therese, come. We weren't mistaken. The same face. later when the roads are not being watched.
one of my choicest roses. Or one of the choicest little flowers in my palace. Thank you, Father. Shall we walk today? When two people walk, each can speak as if to himself and still be heard by the other. Last night, it was so hot. I slept badly. And I dreamt a man came into my room. I only dreamt it. He bent over my bed and kissed me. Is it a sin, such a dream, Father? Hardly, my child. Dreams come unbidden, like the man into your room. Did you recognize him? Oh, yes. I know his face so well. I worshipped it ever since I saw it for the first time in this church. It seems to express everything that's pure and valiant. As he raises his arm to strike the dragon, St. George. Yes, Father. Is it a sin to be in love with the face of a saint? Not exactly. Not if your love is directed toward a saint in heaven rather than to the painted form which embodies him on earth. Oh, I know, Father, if a man can have such a face, he really must be like St. George. That is. But perhaps I should tell you. The man who posed for St. George was far from infallible. Posed? Yes, some two years ago when you... You mean 200 years ago? My child, I'm not referring to the original, which is even older than that. But time and weather had damaged the faces of St. George and the dragon. And an artist was hired to restore them in all innocence. He chose for his models two passers-by whose faces he saw or fancied he saw the extremes of evil and good. Oh, Father... Now I understand everything. Not quite, I'm afraid. I've never talked about this except for the bishop. But those two passers-by were far from being worthy men. As it turned out, they had escaped from prison. Prison? Yes, criminals. They even stole the horse they posed on. They, they rode off with the armor and the halo and, and everything. And nobody knows what's become of them since. Criminals. Both of them? Yes, St. George, too. I, I, I mean the man who posed for him. Of course, one never knows. And who we to pass judgment on a life before the proof of its last hour? Father. Yes. If a man's face is good, can his heart be evil? My child, in all of us, there is a St. George and a dragon. That is the true meaning of the legend of St. George. Evil can be slain only by faith. You must have faith. Wonderful. What an uproar. You are missing the best part. The big fichet. Searching the house. <laughs> Speaking his youth everywhere. And everybody weeping and quarreling and carrying on. I never enjoyed anything so much. <laughs> I just can't bear it. My dear Emil, we always have enough strength to bear the misfortunes of others. You know, you and Uncle Hugo never pulled off a job with the whole police force in the house. Huh? Come in. This terrible robbery, no doubt you've heard. Yes. yes. Well, um, Michel, uh, my, my, my chief of police insists on searching all the rooms. I hope you don't mind. Oh, but it's your house, monsieur. Thank you. Michel! <laughs> Help, Monsieur Richet. I don't require any help. You don't require any help. Hmm? Oh, Therese, where have you been all morning? What is it? You've missed everything. We've been having the most wonderful time. Grandma Jules, for weeks. The poor thing can't leave a room without it. What are you talking about? We've been robbed. Isn't it exciting? Robbed? 
They've been searching all the rooms. St. George's, too. St. George? When I heard that, I was ready to swoon. But Grandma says I mustn't. I'm not old enough. Mademoiselle, I'm no longer in an official position to answer any questions concerning the case. Your father has seen fit to discharge me. Discharge? Where did I leave my umbrella? Forgive me for being so upset. I thought I'd left it in the hall here somewhere. Yes, discharged. Whatever will my wife say to that? She's a young, beautiful woman, and I, I'm not a rich man. Your father has done me a grave injustice. Of course, I know His Excellency needed a scapegoat, and since I didn't recover the jewels, I... But there's one thing I know. Robbery was committed from inside. What? The thief is in the house. Mr. Richet, I found it. I found it. No, my umbrella. Thank you. Thank you. At least I found that. I mean, you found it. My wife gave it to me for our second anniversary. She's so young, so beauty. I think I told you that before. Mademoiselle, I assure you the day will come when your father will agree with me that I had... Bad luck. Huh? Oh, yes. That's right. Never open an umbrella before you go out. Now, don't forget that. What was I saying? That the thief is in the house. Yes, precisely. Mademoiselle, I... Mr. Lee, you're Nice little girl. Big one. Third time. What? Third time. But I've seen her. She hasn't said a word. Remarkable for one of her sex. I'm afraid a fourth time, and I'm liable to fall in love with her. Fall in love? Lay off. That's how they colored my cousin Pierre. Oh, sure. He went out for one night and didn't get home for 15 years. Don't worry. I'm well aware. Often crime make incompatible bedfellows. The most perfect criminal can be traced in court if he leaves his heart behind him as a clue. Sure. Only the heartless succeed in crime, as in love. I can hardly wait to get back to Paris. <laughs> Imagine, with the chief of police out of the way. Why, that will be a thief's holiday. Oh, the rats will play while the cat away. I'm afraid the cat won't be away for long. What do you mean? His Excellency will find a new cat. Who? Oh, probably whoever saves him from ridicule by recovering the jewels. Oh, who could do that? Yes. Indeed. Only one man. Who? Oh. The man who's sitting in front of you. The whole house is upside down. <laughs> I love it. And now a fox dragon. What next? The only thing you want to do was to take the power. Of course, I should take him. Let me serve a doctor, St. George. Papa won't even listen. He's interested only in getting back his jewels. Yes. And that would take a miracle. But the priest said we must have faith. No. To gamble with jewels worth 50,000 francs. Even on a thieves market. No. Not with my hat. My dear, try to see further than the point of your knife. 
I become chief of police, we'll have a chance to loot a city. Loot a city? What's that mean? Conservatively, 15 million. 15? Million in gold. Where is it? On the board of the Bank of Paris. Bank of Paris. <laughs> Such a big job, no? Too big for the two of us. Yes, but we can enlist the support of your dear family. Yeah. Family? Yeah, but we'll have to give them a cut. A small percentage. No. No percentage, just a cut. All right, then it's agreed. Yes, but I still don't see. If you return the loot, how can you be sure you'll make the chief of police? Don't be a fool. I won't return it until I am sure. Monsieur, it is a pleasure. Pity it's all been so dreadful. The pleasure was entirely mine. You mean to settle our forces. I trust Your Excellency will soon recover the jewels. If it were only the jewels, but the dignity of my office. Tomorrow I shall be the laughing stock of the whole country. Your Excellency has already gone a long way towards solving the case by dismissing Monsieur Richet and his theories. What? Oh, oh, yes, yes. In emergencies, I can be absolutely ruthless. But, but, but how to find a successor in this emergency? It shouldn't be difficult to better Monsieur Richet. Even I can tell you where he made his blunder. You can? The robbery wasn't committed from inside your house, but from the outside. Outside? Such an audacious crime could never have been conceived in the submissive soul of a servant, and everyone else in your house was about suspicion. Naturally, everybody. A very good observation there. Well, I confess that the art of detection has long excited my interest. I am what you might call a uh, connoisseur of crime. Of course, I can't promise anything, but if you'd like to accompany me around the house, we might find the clue to prove my The clue! Ah, what have we here? Your Excellency, observe this interesting strand of ivy. Hmm? What, uh, what's interesting about it? Broken. But so it is. Yes. However, did you notice that? The merest matter of trained observation, indispensable to a detective. Oh, remarkable. Your Excellency, we have our first clue. Yeah, I should say that the housebreaker has been acquainted with long stretches of hard labor, stands approximately six feet tall, and weighs no less than 200 pounds. In heaven's name, how can you tell? Elementary, my dear old dog. No less weight would have been sufficient to break that aged up and ivy. Now, the distance above the ground of the first break stipulates the leg span of at least such height. And only the most extraordinary development of the flexor and extensor muscles of the upper arm, such as is commonly acquired at hard labor, would have been equal to that last daring climb from where the trail of the ivy ends to the balcony by which the midnight intruder entered your home. Remarkable. Doubtless, there were windows left open. It was a sultry night. Uh, good morning, Mademoiselle Perez. Hmm? Oh, uh, you know my daughter? Good morning, monsieur. Something. The fourth time hmm? that I've seen her and she hasn't said a word. Your Excellency is to be congratulated. The robber left untouched your most priceless possession. What? Huh? Now, let's see where he went after he left the house. Yes, let's see. Uh, it, 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 down the garden path and out of the gate. Not it's so hasty. Hmm? He wouldn't have chosen the path. Why not? Loose gravel, a man of his weight, has sounded like a cavalry charge. Yes, it's very true. You ought to say that he made his soundless exit across the lawn uh, through those bushes. You really think so? I have a shrewd suspicion. Ah, we are fortunate indeed. Another clue. Mm -hmm. A lock of white hair. Oh, sheep must have blundered by here. The blunder would be ours if we thought so. Do your sheep normally resort to cosmetics? Hmm? These hairs have been powdered and perfumed. I should say that they belong to the wig of, uh... My mother-in-law! Precisely. Mr. Vidoc, you're a genius. Thank you. I shouldn't be surprised if the jewels are hidden not far from this spot. Here? Yeah. It stands to reason that since the police are covering all the roads, the criminal plans to return for his loot after the hue and cry have died down. And now, uh, Your Excellency, I must be on my way to Paris. Oh, no, no! No, please! Not yet! I trust that my clues will be sufficient for your future chief of police to solve the case today. Wait! I'm not going to deliver myself to the hands of another Richet. No more theories for me. I need a man who can give me results. A practical man like... like you. Well, your Excellency, I hope you're not thinking of making me your chief of police. Hmm? Why not? Oh, well. My dear boy, you should devote your talents to the good of society. Odd. Why odd? Very odd. Hmm? Please, Your Excellency, observe these lilies. Phenomenal. They enjoy like the same sun and water, and all of them thrive except one, which is strangely wilted, as if its roots had recently been disturbed. Ah, yes. 
just as I thought. In the annals of crime, I predict this will be called the case of the wilted lily, for unless I'm mistaken, this lily is at the bottom of it all. Or rather, I should say, your jewels are at the bottom of the lily. I'll swear they're all here. Every stone and spangle. Not a sparkle missing, thank heaven. And you, Monsieur Vidor. Fortunately, I could return them this time. However, I may not be able to if they should be stolen again. Again? What do you advise? I would feel quite sure of them if they were in the vault of the Bank of Paris. Which reminds me that I must be getting along to Paris myself. Madame. Monsieur. Mademoiselle. Therese. Have you heard? Yes. Isn't it a miracle? Yes. That was sound advice, Mother, about putting your jewels in the bank. Yes, I dare say. After all, there are few occasions left for an old woman to parade around in her spark. Oh, Grandmama. Lad, I hope you knew how to thank this, Monsieur Vidocq. My dear Mother, I made him my chief of police. Brilliant. <laughs> There's the man for you. And maybe there is also the man for you. Huh? The fates were knitting busily. Take Aunt Ernestine, for example. She who once helped me to get out of jail is now in jail herself, unaware that kindness is always rewarded. Come on, sweetheart. You see, if your doc wants to look at your pretty face. Keep your dirty jokes to yourself. Will you say it? Vidak, the new chief of police. Come on, precious, let's go. Oh. Vernay, female. No. I can't believe it. Believe it and be seated, mademoiselle. You, chief of police? I can't believe it. Thanks to you, I once managed to escape from prison. Now I am in the fortunate position of being able to return your former kindness. You are free. Free? I still can't believe it. Furthermore, I have a job for you. A job? I have a job for you to do in the Bank of Paris. In the bank? Monsieur? Take my car to the manager. Are you chief of police? Excuse me, please. I'm going to see him myself. Monsieur, I'm delighted. This is Lieutenant Emile Vernet, my right-hand man. Very experienced in the ways of the underworld. Delighted, Lieutenant. I came to inquire whether you were satisfied with the individuals I recommended. Satisfied? I'm delighted with them. For example, the man who works as teller. Ah, Monsieur Gabriel. Delighted to see you. He has a microscopic eye. Huh? He spots counterfeit bills on sight already this morning. He spotted five of them. He hasn't let a single counterfeit slip by him into the vault. Good, glad to hear it. His Excellency and I thought it was a wise measure to plant only our very finest detectives as employees in the bank. Wonderful, monsieur. And here comes our night watchman reporting for work. Uh, Earlier than ever. Ah, monsieur Hugo. Good afternoon, monsieur Vidal. Good afternoon, lieutenant. Good afternoon. Mm. I couldn't be more delighted if we had a ghost for night watchman. He haunts the bank. And that female detective, she takes her disguise so seriously. She cleans and scrubs all day. Only this morning, she polished the lock of the vault till it shone like a dazzling star. Good afternoon, Mademoiselle Ernestine. Good afternoon, Monsieur Vidoc. Lieutenant, you dropped something. The impression of the lock? He fooled its wax. I'm delighted with her. But most marvelous of all is the man you sent to guard the vault. Ah, Monsieur Pierre. Specializes in the field of grand larceny. A human ferret, he can sniff danger. Even when I go into the vault, his nose is just behind me. I'll wager he could smell it one franc were missing. How many francs uh, are in there? Oh, offhand, I'd say about 40 or 50 million. 40, 50 million? Then everything's under control. 
No harm can come to us with little Louis to guard us. Quick as a magpie, always running. Now, run off. By the way, is the little boy a detective, too? Just an apprentice. Wonderful, wonderful. You've made us feel very safe indeed. Well, thank you for your confidence. Good day. Family divide, I, I never could divide. Your share is 22 million. 22 million? Oh, I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm so rich. I could spit cold. You got the wife's impression? I can buy anything. A castle, city. I can buy the pyramids. Buy them? Oh, I can build them in every stone of gold. I must say, Aunt Ernestine did a good job. Drive back to Cousin Michelle's and have him make the key as fast as possible. I'll walk back to the office as fast as possible. I shall proceed to tell what happened in the meanwhile to Loretta with the beautiful shadow on a candlelit screen. Little did I know that she had given up her public for a private life. She had married for richer than poorer, for better than worse, till death do them part, the substantial Monsieur Vichy. What is it? I've been thinking. Don't you know about what? I know about that garter. Again. In the case of the garter. After all, my sweet, you're married to a detective. I'm married to a jealous fool. Oh, I protest, my love. I'm interested in the garter. Uh, that, that is, in the man who stole it from a purely professional point of view. But that tiny garter may be the means of recovering everything I've lost. My post as chief of police, my entire career. For if I apprehend that thief, His Excellency will certainly admit that I was right all along. And believe me, he will bow to my theory. Theory? At this time of night? If my theory is right, he is precisely the same man who's committed a whole chain of felonies. And yet, all the other victims describe him as young, dashing, Casanova-like, the, the type that women lose their heads over. Aren't you listening, my angel? Could it be that your description of him was not quite uh, precise? As you may recall, you said that he was old, bald, unattractive, huh? Precisely. Well, then. Old or young, bald or not, I still don't understand how a man could steal a woman's garter without... Uh, I, I mean, without... Uh... All right, have it your way. It wasn't without, it was with. With what? With love and kisses. Yours truly, Loretta. <laughs> Aha! What did you say? Now then. And I, little was I aware how soon the shadow of my past was to fall across my way. It was the next morning in front of a little hat shop. Oh! Oh, my hat! Stop it! Stop it! My new hat! My beautiful hat! It's really dreadful about your hat. How can I ever repay the captivating Mademoiselle Loretta? That shouldn't be hard for the taking Lieutenant Rousseau with the money he got from my garter. It wasn't much. The rubies weren't as good as you thought. And you were much worse than I could have imagined. Really, I, I, I should call the police. Well, don't call them until I've bought you another hat. Another... another hat? Well, I, I admit I'm not so rich that I can afford to throw them in the gutter. Hats don't grow on trees, you know. I know, but some of the latest fashions look as if they did. Oh, my dear, you'd look simply irresistible in that bonnet trimmed with violets. Oh, do you really think I'd look well in violets? I, I rather fancy that big Florentine straw. Then it's yours. Isn't it beautiful? It looks made for you. I'll take this one. Monsieur will pay for it. I'm delighted. How much? A mere 80 francs. Oh, that's not too much for a beautiful hat, is it? You look positively ravishing in it. Thank you, monsieur. It's large enough to cover a multitude of sins. Charming sins. Oh, thank you. Madame still owes for the other hat. 
Oh, yes. But the one you made me drop. Delighted. How much? Oh, that's only 35 francs. Thank you, monsieur. There is still the matter of your unpaid bill for the past three months, madame. Oh, 420 francs, monsieur. Delighted. Just a visiting card. Thank you, monsieur. I hope you'll come soon again. But, monsieur. May I see you to a cab? You may see me home, in it? Uh, cab? I must say you commit your crimes all the more. Rather like old times, isn't it? Except... I'm married. Oh, I'm so happy. Unhappily. What? Married. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why, sorry? All the more reason we should meet again. I see. Sometimes the chains of matrimony are so heavy they have to be carried by three. Uh, do you speak from experience or from observation? Observation. It has saved me from the experience. Please, listen seriously. For the past two years, I've not been able to put a certain Lieutenant Russo out of my mind. I believe I'm in love with him. In that case, madame, you're in love with a man who no longer exists. He's as dead as the past. I disagree, monsieur. The past is very much alive, as alive as I am. I, I hate, really hate bringing up the delicate matter of the garter again, but I happen to know the Minister of Police has offered a reward for... Oh, for those paltry rubies. Oh, no. No, nothing so trifling. For the man who has committed a whole chain of similar crimes during the last two years. Are you planning to collect the reward? Oh, let's not talk about money. Friendship, I need, Lieutenant. Oh, I, I almost forgot. The Lieutenant is dead. Just to be sure we don't lose track of each other again, I'd better know your name. Your present one. I've had so many names, I'm afraid I don't remember the most recent one. Perhaps you'll refresh your memory by consulting the visiting card in your wallet. Dear lady, after our visit to the hat shop, my wallet is empty. Is that all we mean to each other? An empty wallet? Oh, oh, home already. Well, goodbye. Oh, such a cold goodbye for an old flame. The last time we parted, you... You weren't so easily satisfied. Goodbye. Thank you, Let's hope there's nothing missing this time. You promised to come back in an hour. It's over two hours. I am late only because you refused me money for a cab. And I had to walk. My darling, until I'm working again, it's only fair to make a few sacrifices. Uh, what? You bought another hat? What other pleasure do I have except hats? Isn't it beautiful? You bought enough hats. Look! Look! Three, six, twelve, twenty. You could open up a hat shop yourself. I don't have any more hats than you have, silly disguises. Look! Three, six, twelve, twenty wigs and, and at least a dozen of these silly beards. But you don't understand. They're the tools of a detective's trade. You're not a detective anymore. That's beside the point. Once before, I told you. I you know, know, dear. That's why the gentleman pay for it. Pay? For what? My hat. A gentleman? Who? Believe it or not, he didn't give his name. On my honor. On your what? Honor. 
Once before you went off with the strange man who didn't give his name. It's not the same man. Aha! You deny it. That is true. He's here in Paris. You're seeing him again. He steals your daughter. You take his hat. The whole thing is perfectly obvious. How can a woman stoop so low? Oh! You beg your horse! My beautiful Florentine straw! Uh, Let go! You, you Cleopatra! You Mesalina! Oh, the second hat today! Oh, this is too much! I'll catch this criminal who steals garters and wives. Even though I have been discharged, I'll prove I can still be more useful than this, this Monsieur Vidoc. The doc? Yes, the chief of police, my successor. Your successor? <laughs> What's so funny about that? <laughs> Your successor. Jail, that's enough. You should be grateful. Next, cut down Uncle Hugo, too. Are you counting on your paper or on your knife to cut his percentage? What does it matter? In business. Nothing matters now except to move quickly or your pyramid will go up in smoke. Do you remember the lady of the garter? The singer? Is she in Paris? Yes, our past is catching up with us. We'll have to crack the vault tomorrow, no later. Yes, yes, tomorrow everything is ready. And the key? Made. Then pass the word to your family. Tomorrow night, none of us will sleep, so you better sleep now. Good night. And golden dreams. Good night. Women always surprise us by doing the expected. I suppose you've come to return my wallet. Oh, that. Here it is, Monsieur the Doc. Thank Where you. did you ever dig up that name? In a cemetery. <laughs> For once, I believe you. Uh, don't worry, your elegant visiting cards are all there. But apparently not my money. Oh, I forgot. I had to keep it in order to buy a new hat. Another hat? The last one went the way of the first. You mean uh, a horse stepped on it? My husband. Your predecessor. My predecessor? Yes. I, I mean, of course, in this chair. Madame, you please to be mysterious. Oh, I'm no mystery. I am Madame Richet. Madame. Richet. At least no one can reproach me for not being faithful to the police force. Does he suspect? A detective is always suspicious. He suspects me of having worn my garter a little loosely. But he doesn't know yet that I lost it to a certain Monsieur Vidoc. There's no fool so dangerous as a fool with brains. Except a woman so foolish as to fall in love. Time has made you even more intriguing. Madame. Surely you're considered enough to realize no woman could ever forget you. Or give you up. Of course, but this is hardly the moment or the place. Then meet me at the hat shop this evening. At six. Au revoir, monsieur. This is an unexpected pleasure. We're just on our way to see my son-in-law, Monsieur Rudolph, and thought we'd freshen our acquaintance by smiling in at you. Therese, Mimi, you know Monsieur Vidoc? Yes, we do. Your voice is as lovely as you are, Mademoiselle Therese. What fortunate chance brings you up into the country? My jewels, Monsieur. I'm taking your sound advice to put them in the Bank of Paris. 
I have some rather important business there myself. Uh, may I escort you? Well, then you can do me a real favor by taking the girls in my place. Meanwhile, I'll acquaint your father of our arrival but and... Grandmama, you could do both if... If and ends don't make pots and pans, do as you're told, girl, and keep a sharp eye on my sparklers. Monsieur, I trust you with my most valuable possessions. Well, I'll be off. No, 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 don't trouble. I know my way. Madame, we'll start immediately. Emile, order my carriage. I'm going to deposit these young ladies in their jewels at the bank. Yes, jewels at the bank. <laughs> Chief pulled a smart freight. Now when we crack the vault, we'll get all the gold and a heap of jewels. For good measure, everything is ready. I've got enough wine barrels to roll out a hundred million francs. Then I pull up tonight. Hey, I? If you don't mind, I'd like to take this to the vault myself. As you wish, mademoiselle. Please, this way. Thanks to Monsieur Vidoc, the Bank of Paris is the safest place in the world. And now, if you permit, We'll put your strong box under lock and key. Therese, hurry. Can we depend on the wagons? My dear nephew, you know the driver is my sweetheart. Ten o'clock tonight. Is the box ready? As soon as we are. It's no joke. May I escort you home, Mademoiselle Therese? But Therese, you promised. But Mimi. You gave me your word the next time we came into Paris, you'd take me to the Chinese carousel. All week I've been planning to ride the big goldfish. Or should I choose the Pekingese? Well, if Monsieur Vidoc doesn't mind, perhaps we could stop at the carousel. It would be a pleasure, Mademoiselle Mimi. Thank you very much, Monsieur Vidoc. Come on, Trent, let's hurry. You got the key? I won't need you anymore until 10 tonight. What time do we meet? Turn. saying goodbye to Paris. Goodbye? I'm afraid so. As you know, I only became chief of police to help your father out of a temporary difficulty. Oh, but Papa needs you, monsieur. He needs you more than ever now. And Grandmama, she'll miss you, and Mimi will miss you, and... And you? I shall miss you, too. I shall miss you very much. You're very generous, mademoiselle. But I shall have to appear ungrateful. There are important matters that will take me away from France. Is a dragon going with you? Dragon? Yes. Oh, you're a lieutenant. Oh, Emile, yes. But... He is? Why do you call him the dragon? Because... Every time I see his evil face, I think of the painting in our little church. The painting of St. George and the dragon. What are you talking about? Let's not pretend. I know everything. How you rode off with the armor of St. George and the lands and... Even the halo. Merciful heavens. However did you learn that? I guess it's from what the priest told me. But don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. I didn't even tell Papa when you borrowed Grandmama's jewels. Borrowed? So you know that too? Yes. But... The one thing I really want to know, Monsieur, I don't know. Well, well perhaps I can help you. Oh, if you only would. You see, some nights ago, I dreamt a man came into my room and kissed me. Oh, really? 
I trust it was a pleasant dream. Very pleasant, but... Well, what more do you want to know? If it was just a dream, or... Or? Or you. Ah, now I understand your problem. Well, uh, let's examine the facts. I take it that the intruder was too expert to leave any clues. None. Except for the kiss, of course. Oh, yes, of course. You should be able to tell from another kiss whether I am the man of your dream. Like this? No. This is different from anything I ever dreamt. My dear Therese, I'm afraid we'll have to wake up. Why? Unfortunately, there's the matter of my past, which has just reappeared in the shape of a lovely lady. The lady you love? Not the lady I love. So nothing stands in our way. Only she and uh, some others may not be too pleased to learn about dreams. And your father, instead of signing our marriage contract, would have to sign a warrant for my arrest. That's why I had to leave Paris tomorrow. I understand. I have no other choice. Neither have I. I'm going with you. If I can't be respectable, I'll be bad. I could help you. I'd make a much better lieutenant than that clumsy man you have with you now. I could sneak in and out of rooms like a cat. I could be very useful. I could... I could make men fall in love with me. Good heavens, why should you? Between kisses, you know, I could see their wallets. Steel? Yes. You don't believe me? I have started already. Look here. Grandmama Stewart. I took them out of a strong box and nobody even noticed it. That's wonderful. Yes. I mean, disgraceful. Why? I stole them for you. Thank you. But you don't expect me to marry a thief. What can I do? If you won't come over to my side, I'll have to go over to yours. Darling, I promise you, whichever side you're on, we'll be there together. You promise? On one condition. What? That you return these jewels immediately. Why should I? They're not grandmama. They're mine. What? I just made it up. You... <laughs> you little hypocrite. <laughs> yes. Would you like to? Yes. Which shall we take? The griffin or the goldfish? Are these the biggest you have? And the most expensive, madame. But I don't suppose there's any need to discuss the price until your gentleman acquaintance arrives. <laughs> no. Oh, show me some others. Yes, madame. Shall it come? Ah, oh, madame. How do you like this one? Isn't it a stunning hat? Oh. Even your husband will adore it. Ah, my husband. He's so suspicious. So jealous. Oh, what does that matter? Does monsieur like that? <laughs> You're very lovely, Therese. Am I as lovely as the other lady? In her eyes, I see myself as I am. But in yours, I see myself as I could be. As I hope to be. so late. Ah, oh, my dear, it's worth your waiting. Just come upstairs and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, don't worry. Your gentleman acquaintance will see the lights and find the door unlatched. You will see it's modeled on a top hat worn by Beau Brummel till a certain countess appeared in it to prove to the world that Mr. Brummel was verbal. Looking for somebody? Uh, no. Uh, yes, a uh, lady's in there. A lady? You're a little old for something like that. Come on, this isn't a peep show. 
A citizen has some rights to pay taxes and obey the police. Come on. I protest. I have a right to be here. So you have a right. Precisely. I'll give you a right. I'll point up with a left hand precisely. In the face of illogical brutality, I withdraw. And don't you come back, you beefy clown. Mm. If the absolute rage in London is just the thing for your Roman profile. Well, I, I love the hat, but uh, do, do you think the dress is um, revealing enough? Uh, well, this, uh, well, this blouse is a little shy, but I have another that's more than just revealing. It's a revelation. Oh. Uh, will you excuse me while I fetch it to the stock room? You can be trying this on. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, the hat is a dream. Oh, the last word. Looking back on the phantasmagoria of my life, I've often wondered what would have happened had I been in time for my appointment with the past. Of course, the Vichy was only a fool, but a fool is always dangerous. And above all, that jealous fool who had set his cap to catch a shadow. You're late. I'm afraid I'll have to run or else my husband will be asking questions. Who are you? It's me. Me, your husband. You? What do you mean trying to frighten me with one of your silly disguises? Is the great detective trying to be funny or... Or have you really taken up peddling? Hmm, not a bad idea. Perhaps you'd like me to accompany you on the streets with a heart doing. Draw me a penny. I am sick. And my husband's a lunatic. So... You're expecting your, your sweetie. And who is he? That scoundrel of a Casanova. That same criminal who stole your garter and now is stealing you from me. But I won't tolerate it. I won't. I, I. Darling, you're not frightening me, but you are frightening those poor little birds. And now, excuse me, I'm tired of you. Loretta. Loretta, you can't do this to me. I, I love you. I, I'd rather put an end to myself. And to my misery. It would suit you to, to get me out of the way. Precisely. Loretta, I've got to have you. I'm serious. I'm going to shoot myself. I'm going to shoot him. This thief. I'm going to shoot. <laughs>
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I loved her. Oh, it's you. You've come for me so soon. I lost track of... I lost my wife. She was so young and beautiful, and... But I suppose that doesn't matter now. You can take me away. I won't give you trouble. I did it. Promise me one thing. That man I've been pursuing for years. He's the real criminal. You've got to find him. I failed, but you won't. Promise me you'll put an end to him. I have already put an end to him. You have? You're a great detective. Greater than I ever was. There was one more appointment that I had to keep this night. At the Bank of Paris, where Emile and his family were waiting for me. We couldn't do anything until you came. The boat has to get underway in half an hour. Where's the key to the vault? Here it is. I have no use for it. What do you no, mean? No use for the key. You may do what you wish. I'll have no part in it. I relinquish my share. It's all mine. And I guess yours and mine too. Why yours? Why his? I suggest that you destroy the key, remove the barrels, and leave the bank as you found it. Now, if you feel inclined to follow my suggestion, I promise you that you will all be kept on in the jobs that you've filled so well. But if you ignore it, I warn you that as chief of police of France, I will track you down to the ends of the earth if necessary, recover the treasure, and bring you all to justice. Now, make your decision. Good heavens, I shall be late to dinner with my future father-in-law, His Excellency, the Minister of Police. Did you hear what he said about his father-in-law? Being His Excellency, the Minister of Police. What can we do? Huh? What can we do? Oh, yes, yes. Well, uh, I can't deny I've gotten used to my job at the bank. Washing floors is better than being in jail. The manager of the bank offered me a promotion yesterday. Huh? Promotion, yes, yes. Emil brought that man to us. Emil, what do you advise? Emil? Where is he? He's gone. Gone? She's worth 50 million francs. <laughs> Much more than that. Not to me. I want my share. Nobody can stand between me and 50 million. Still building your pyramid. Perhaps I should acquaint you with the fact that those pyramids became their builders' tombs. Hmm. Not my tomb. But yours! <laughs> Thank you. 
that you recompense the many ladies whose uh, treasures you have pilfered and, where possible, give back what you have taken. But with pleasure, Your Excellency. Call me Papa, dear boy. Papa. Oh, thank you, Papa. And I also ask the forgiveness of Madame la Marquise, which was generously conceded. Oh, blood. All men are criminals in the light of reason. One steals our hearts, the other our jewels. Fortunately, my dear boy, you were as skillful at one as at the other. But in future, I hope you will behave, Satan. Uh, what did I say? Behave, Satan. Exactly. I even confessed to little Mimi, who took it very lightly. I knew it from the very beginning. Knew what? That no man is a saint. <laughs> 